Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here at Activate Learn on Twitter. It is time for another book review and I am excited today to share a review of a book by an author who I know so well and who was a colleague and now a friend of mine. It's Cheryl Walker and she's written her book Leverage Live Online, how to create transformational engagement in webinars, virtual workshops and online meetings. Now, I used to work with Cheryl. She headed up the digital learning team of a major corporate organisation some years ago. And while I was in her team, I learned so much, so much about virtual collaboration, how to work and learn together through the use of online social and virtual tools. And the point of difference with Cheryl's book over any other book about virtual online learning is the fact that Cheryl brings out the three lever levers to incorporate into your live online webinars or workshops or meetings that would really transform the engagement. Now, I don't know about you, but I have attended so many online workshops and webinars uh, and classrooms that were really utterly boring. Sometimes many people would just turn off their cameras. Facilitators might ask a question and they would get tumbleweeds. And it really honed in that, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are using the tools of virtual collaboration, virtual tools, but might not really be kind of incorporating some real facilitative techniques that get people engaged with what they're listening to and what they're watching and what they're doing. So what Cheryl has done is she has come up with three levers, okay? And in the book on how to, in a section on how to read this book, she basically says that the three levers to transform online, live online learning is either language, empathy and inclusivity. These are the three levers that we should be incorporating into our live online sessions, whether we're running webinars, online workshops or whatever it is, or meetings. Okay, so she starts off with the book with these three levers and she says, if we're looking for inspiration in our online meetings, okay, if we want to inspire people in our online meetings, well, maybe that's where we start to think about our language. And as I read more about this, I thought, what does she mean by language? And the language is, well, this perception of how we pitch that online meeting or that online workshop to our participants. So thinking about the language of what we do and what we share to our participants would make them excited, okay? So not calling it a webinar, which is something that um, I must admit, I had a bit of a chuckle here because she hates the word webinar. And to be fair, if you think about a webinar, you think of a situation where you're online, you got everyone's cameras turned off, and as a facilitator or a presenter, just talking to slides, and it's boring and there's no interaction, okay? So the very first thing she mentions about is the lever of language, looking at how we pitch language and making it positive and inspiring throughout the session. Okay, that's fairly straightforward, but too often we miss it. Now, the second lever, which is the lever that I enjoyed most in this book, was empathy. Now, you might be thinking, empathy, what do you need that for? Well, she says here that empathy forms the delicate threads of our shared humanity. If we can enact and experience empathy, then we're well on the way to harvesting the best each individual has to offer this planet. Okay, this lever enables you to deeply engage anyone who has taken the time to join your live online environment. Now, there's a whole chapter on what she calls empathy objects. Now, empathy objects are different activities that build empathy, where we're connecting with people. And there's a whole heap of them on. So she talks about, you know, helping people to turn their webcams on and getting them to see the value of turning their web cameras on, 
there's also things about making sure that we maintain eye contact into the lens and not looking at ourselves as I'm doing here, but forcing ourselves during our sessions to really look at the lens because then we're really maintaining the eye contact. She talks about another empathy object of being introductions. And I don't know about you, but so often I've been to online webinars or online meetings and the very first thing is people just jump into the, the, the topic or jump into the content without really understanding who the people are there, where are they from, and just basically getting some introductions. Some other empathy objects she talks about is pitching questions to get people to start thinking and reflecting about the topics of what was being discussed. Also the use of breaks, um, the use of silence, uh, she actively encourages silence and she even says some activities which were really interesting to me, which I hadn't even considered before, about the use of breakout rooms and encouraging people to get into a breakout room, but rather than jump into a topic, get comfortable for a couple of minutes of just not talking to each other and simply just concentrating on each other, thinking about the topic before jumping in. So as you can see, these different empathy objects are all about coming to terms or understanding the value that everyone brings to the table or brings online. Now, the third uh, lever is inclusivity. Now, inclusivity, she says, requires you to go the whole nine yards. It's a moving target as you'll be chasing a dynamic and developing genre of communicative situations and inventive conversations. This one is the most riskiest and most rewarding for those willing to experiment and push the digital tools to their limits whilst attempting to hold delic delicately the humanity that we share. And inclusivity was all about um, asking some really deep questions, also encouraging people to talk about their, say, family members or bring their pets along to the, um, to the meeting maybe kind of future casting as well, pitching a question that gets everyone to speak and behave as though it's 10 years into the future from now on, and basically having fun and being a little bit more playful in the sessions. So this book about live online, I would highly recommend it because it's, it's very different to other books that you might find. Now you might say, yeah, but does it tell me how to use Teams or does it tell me how to use the breakout rooms of Microsoft Teams? And that's that's not what it's about. You know, learning a tool is quite easy. You can just fire up YouTube, do a Google search and find out how to do and how to use the functions of the tools. But no one really gives you the skills or the behaviors of how you can encourage people to actively ask a question, to brainstorm um, a topic, to work together and collaborate together, and to actually create a sense of belonging and a community from live online. So if your organization is possibly thinking of running webinars or um, are, sh are doing live online classes and they're not incorporating some of these empathetic, inclusive behaviours that allow for their people to get online and collaborate and really enjoy that time together online, you've got to ask yourself, well, what are you doing with the online tools? So look, leveraging live online learning, I would highly recommend it. I'll leave a link to Cheryl's website where you can order the book for you and your team. This is the way, this is the way that we are going to create transformational experiences using live online and virtual tools that we have currently in our workplace and live. So there you go, Leveraging Live Online by Cheryl Walker. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Bye for now.